There has been an unending burning passion and desire for education across the world, Africa and particularly Nigeria. With all of the acquired education at the different levels and stages of life, has the reading culture in Africa and particularly Nigeria improved? How helpful has education been towards the improvement and growth of our society? My name is Christopher Chibon Najon. I'm a, a teacher. Prince Oke Mbejofo. The first principal academy is of uh, Bill Gate High School, opposite Abatoa Market, Joss. Mr. Jamil Haruna Nankoli, a teacher with Bill Gate High School, Joss. In a growing society such as ours today, education is very, very important because education is light in darkness and we know the value of light to any society which is not something that we should joke with we know that humanly speaking we cannot do without light so light helps you to see things in a clear perspective see things well and to do things well so if any it, society want to make a headway any country want to progress from where it is it must put more emphasis on education well i wouldn't give you a dictionary meaning of uh, education because everybody knows what education is but i would prefer to focus on society growing society if a society is growing uh, the, 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 the principal elements and uh, powers in that society should decide the direction the society wants to grow. So education for me is not just getting people past their school start, get OND, HND, BTEC, BSc and stuff like that. Education should be, you know what the society needs and then you train the people in that society to fit into the society. You create a homegrown curriculum. For instance, in the north here, we have, I mean, this is, uh, this is much, right? We have onions, we have, uh, so, I mean, uh, potatoes, we have um, tomatoes and all the kind of stuff. The education we need around here, most of the time, should be how to farm, how to preserve what's being farmed, how to make it, I mean, how to make it relevant, how to keep it, how to store it, how to use it, and how to ship it to other parts of the world not just get somebody pass through university of just uh, have a bn be a bachelor of engineering and stuff like that what does it add to us nothing so but if education is relevant to the needs of a society then that society can grow if you have 1000 people from the university of just another university around the country graduating every year but they cannot make positive impact in their communities and societies then they are not educated because that education is not relevant to the needs of the society. When we talk of the importance of education, the importance of education cannot be overemphasized. It's something that we need to tell our people. You see, in terms of uh, becoming a good citizen, it's one of the importance of uh, uh, education. Education is very, very important to a growing society because uh, it makes people to be very, very aware of what is going on globally. In terms of knowing your rights, abide by laws, and uh, other things that make the society to grow. So, um, uh, by, uh, abide by the rules and regulations of the country. About more than 50% of Nigeria has a problem of reading culture. And then because why, sometimes you ask a question why, is because of the educational setting we have in Nigeria. We discover that uh, we value certificate. We place more emphasis on certificate more than what the person can give. Like about 10 years ago or thereabouts, the reading culture was virtually not there. People actually don't read. You know, the advent of phones and all that made youths and children of today to basically lose interest in reading. 
and we discovered that the one part uh, examination malpractices. You begin to ask yourself, how can we not spend my time reading? Why somebody can just go here, get the paper, just write and clear, and you, you spend the whole night trying to read. But with schools, you know, getting more aware of what is needed in society, the reading culture is improving. I wouldn't say there is no reading culture, there's a reading culture, it's improving. Like this is a primary school here, you know, but then we have a, a system where children come and pick books and read and then, you know, give a reportage of what they've read and stuff like that, you know. So, but basically, we, we cannot, you cannot compare with what was available when we were growing up. If you look at uh, reading culture in our society, in the first instance, uh, as a school, you look at, uh, do we even have a library? Or the school have good library? Well, because uh, when there is no good library in a particular school, there is no way you think uh, uh, that reading culture will flow the way you expect. So the reading culture of, our, of, our, of many schools, I mean student, among the students, is not that proper. It's of substandard because uh, students will complain that there is no library, students will complain that uh, there is no enough uh, facilities. When people read, the more they are reading, the more they understand what they are supposed to understand. But the problem we are having now, the students seriously neglect the reading culture in our society because of the use of social media sites. They pay more attention on the social media than their books. The moment we begin to remove our eyes from certificate paper is actually good and begin to look at whether this person is competent what can this person offer to the society what can this person give to the society then people will begin to realize that they need to equip themselves they need to read to know they need to improve on themselves not only to do whatever they can do to get certificate and go to anywhere because we place more emphasis on certificate we begin, begin to look at what the person can give as individuals what can we offer to this nation and look less on the certificate certificate is very important but less and then we handle the issue of examination malpractices so that our our students we go back to know that if you don't read you will not pass. What can be done is first and foremost to harness the crop of people who understand what reading means and what can be gained through reading. When these people are harnessed, then they should be made to introduce strategic and systematic reading. Introduce it to growing children from probably age four, thereabouts. And then people should be motivated to read giving what to read, giving stuff to read, things that are relevant to their growth, relevant to their aspirations and pursuits. So we can deliberately and intentionally make children to read by giving them what to read, motivating them to read, reinforcing their reading, and making them know that they're not just reading for reading's sake. You read so that you can advance in knowledge, especially in the kind of knowledge you want to acquire. And then when they've read, examine what they've read, let them let them show that they can retrieve what they've read. There are many things to be done to improve the reading culture. In the first instance, when you look at uh, schools generally, there are private schools, there are government schools. And uh, in order to have a complete, a good appraisal of what you have just asked now, the government must intervene. Even if private schools don't have enough capability to provide all these things. Government at the same time, so far we are part and part of them. They should do something to improve by providing some certain facilities, encouraging students uh, to read. In our schools, there should be a reintroduction of guidance and counseling units because many of the students, they are just coming to school without knowing what is the importance of education. They need to be guided they need to have a kind of counseling on what they are supposed to do that unit is very very important of which it has been seriously neglected in most of our secondary schools
we can encourage people and we can begin from social institutes like the schools we can start grooming our little ones inculcating the culture of reading in them so that as they grow they get used to it and then in churches in mocks we can have our leaders encourage people to read books give them title of books and then tell them a short story about a book and then give them easy way to be able to reach those books tell them where they can get them from we can do that in the universities also they can encourage people students to get books to read to help them because not everything that you'll be taught in class so books will help so by doing that we can encourage more people to to read books my name is Sadiq Jamila Mohammed. I'm a student of Bukid High School. Ezra Clement Soloma. Eunice Jeremiah. Yes, education has impacted a lot on me because I believe I am different from those people out there who aren't in school. Me being in school has impacted so many ways. I know my left from my right. Education has really impacted a lot in me because education is not for the classroom. It involves every other activity we do. It involves the acquiring of knowledge here and elsewhere. So whenever I acquire knowledge, I believe that it is education I'm really acquiring. And I, it has impacted not just educationally, but also morally into me. And it has made me smarter. So it has helped me because I believe that I will be a better person tomorrow due to the impact of education. Education has been able to impact a lot in me. In terms of my reading, education has been able to help me to read well, spell and interact with others and also learn how to speak in public. I read two hours every day but not on Saturdays and Sundays because I usually take a break to rest. So within the week, after classes, when it's night, then I read so I'll be able to recall what our teacher has taught us. I read every day of the week, but precisely I cannot quote the exact time I do read, but I read every day week. I use at least five days in a week to read and I use, each day I use two hours to go through my books. Education has helped to raise many countries, it serves as a backbone to help every developing country. Because without education, I don't think there's any country that will serve as a world power, but due to the level of education acquired, that is why today we have reached the stage where we are. If we should rate the performance of students today, it really reflects back to their reading culture. And reading culture is not encouraging because if we see the external examinations we sit for, there's a higher percentage of failure due to a deficiency in the reading culture. To every individual, education means something different and for different purposes. But the big question is, do Africa have a reading culture problem? I'm Professor Dr. Ijoma Georgiana Omahi Ayuba. I lecture with the University of Jos. I am a member of the Nigerian Institute of Town Planners, a registered town planner. I am also a member of the Nigeria Environmental Society. I am the chairperson of uh, Read, Learn and Grow Literacy Organization of Nigeria. Also the chairperson of Oma Publishers Nigeria Limited. Also uh, the vice president of the Artistic Platform and the vice president of uh, Economic African Economic Empowerment Center. Mr. David Asmul, I'm a member board of trustee for the Read, Learn and Grow Literacy Organization of Nigeria and I am the founder of the Dell Agro Produce Storage Innovation Center and I also happen to be a resource person for the UMA Publishers Literary Contest across secondary schools in Nigeria. As an academic and also an entrepreneur, it is very easy for me to marry both together. Uh, why? Because both industries are related. Yes, uh, like the publishing industry, uh, the publishing company, I found it uh, necessary to dive into the publishing industry uh, because it is also related to the academics. 
the publishing industry produce books which the academics read in Iwuma Publishers Nigeria Limited we have field officers we have the company secretary uh, we have the managing director uh, the general manager we also have a, a different sections headed by different managers and so my attention is actually not really required except in a situation where, where they needed to edit the literacy level is poor in Nigeria. Uh, from research findings, we have been able to identify within communities at the grassroots, sub and urban areas that there is a deficit in the literacy level, especially when you have interactions with members of the communities or the general populace predisposed in these particular areas who claim to have been educated or likely have gone to university or some form of literacy skill acquisition program, you actually still identify that there is a limitation in this particular, particular members of the populace. Um, why do I say this is that if you have an interaction with them, you can actually identify challenges in the area of comprehensibility, the ability to comprehend. And um, at the higher level also, you discover that uh, those who have even graduated from the university cannot be able to bridge the gap between the theory they have learned in the university and the practical which should be applied in the real world. Uh, with this particular deficit, you discover that there is a necessity for addressing this issue and limitations we are faced as a result of low literacy level across Nigeria. Yes, uh, there's actually a reading culture problem in Africa. Uh, there's this adage that I normally hear people say <laughs> that uh, when uh, you want to hide anything, uh, you, you should hide it in a book and then that African man will not see it. Now, now, this adage is actually telling us that the black man does not read. As a person in the publishing industry, I strongly believe in the adage because in the publishing industry, uh, unlike those days, right now we don't make that much sales. Uh, that is a pointer to the fact that people no longer engage themselves reading print materials. This is an absolute yes because uh, if you look at it that uh, in Nigeria today, the Graduates from secondary school, the moment they have finished their SSCE, there seem to be a form of a backdrop in which the students cannot be able to continue in that pattern where they started from GSS 1 to SS3. And you know, there is also this challenge whereby when you interact with students, haven't been said that they're graduates, they are unable to actually deliver what they have learned through a number of years when you ask them. So this is as a result of a poor approach towards reading, learning, and comprehension in the academic uh, arena within Nigeria. The reading culture problem is general. Starting from the nursery school up to the tertiary institution, even the general public. It's something that is really disturbing. Um, you know, education is a tripartite approach. It involves the parents, the teachers, and the students. And their commitments in, t in, in the area of training a particular pupil or student at whatever level is one that works unanimously. So um, I would want to blame the government or the system which is set to improve literacy acquisition skills in Nigeria. Um, you discover that certain teachers do not have the required training before embarking on the teaching art or the art of teaching. So the impact teachers make at the nursery level to the primary level to the secondary level is one that necessitates the students to be able to engage in rigorous study of the academic uh, uh, curriculum. But when the teachers do not give or have what it takes to deliver the right teaching to a particular student you actually do not expect that um, the student will actually improve academically so the drawback here is actually within the teaching environment and the provisions made to improve the literacy level by the government across the country so i will solely blame this tripartite approach the parents the teachers and the students they need to actually put heads together to achieve a high level of comprehensibility and knowledge acquisition. Well, already my team had already 
come up with a, a particular program tagged the Oma Literary Contest for secondary school students in Nigeria. Now, this particular contest is meant to promote reading culture in Nigeria, test student recall ability. I think since the public and private sectors are the end users of the products of academics, training students, graduates actually work for the public and private sector. So where there's a deficit in literacy, you do not expect a graduate to be able to actually deliver theoretical knowledge practically in the working environment because of the lack of literacy or ability to read and learn appropriately. So it is time that these same people who will, the graduates come to serve in the public or the private uh, sector to start going to the drawing board and coming up with programs and schemes and uh, uh, projects that will enable uh, uh, students improve their literacy level such as literary contest which is one that the Uma Publishers Nigeria Limited has come up with and I'm very impressed about this because it will enable us to have a database to know students who are actually good readers and those who are poor readers within the school environment. Having said this I need all Nigerians the stakeholders, government, politicians, philanthropists, students, principals to key into the upcoming OMA literary contest for secondary school students in Nigeria so as to promote reading culture, test students' recall ability and test students' rate of comprehension. Um, with my understanding of the UMA literary contest for secondary school students across Nigeria. Um, it's a timely intervention because uh, the kids have not really left the foundation of the secondary school, which is an area where you can still mold them. Um, unlike when they're in the university, it will be a challenge. Uh, uh, the program or project itself is one that provides literary materials in the form of novels to participant students in their schools. These novels are actually lent or borrowed to them to read and then participate in an exam which is used to measure their ability of understanding what they have read or learnt. So indeed, um, I will really say that encouraging this project uh, and seeing the students across Nigeria and Nigerian secondary schools key into this project, um, it's one that I see very visible because the materials for the project are actually free. And um, two, it is one way we know that novels are written in such a, a creative imaginative pattern, whereby it builds the creativity and imagination and empathy, empathy of the reader. So, and these are some of the aspects that could help increase the level of absorption and understanding on text of materials written down. Uh, I would really encourage that the public and private sector support the UMA uh, Publishers Nigeria Limited uh, Literary Contest among secondary school students in Nigeria. I'm employing all Nigerian students, stakeholders in the educational sector to key into this project. It's so timely because if you take a survey of each graduate from the various secondary schools across Nigeria, you will discover that less than 10% are those who have truly been well trained to be literate, uh, to have the lit literacy capacity required to actually function at the higher institution. So um, the project is timely and um, I would want to uh, uh, employ all Nigerian children and, and uh, uh, students and stakeholders to key into this project and the private and public sector to see how they can support by whatever means possible to see the success of this project because it will help indeed in improving the standard of reading and the level of literacy across Nigeria with all efforts on deck. There is a need to help revive the reading culture in Africa and Nigeria. Let's all join hands together to support the Umar Literacy Contest for Secondary Schools in Nigeria. Make it count. Let's all join hands and make it a reality. Don't miss out. Be ready for season one of the Oma Literary Contest for secondary school students in Nigeria.